Angela Merkel had a meeting yesterday with the Prime Ministers of our states to negotiate the exit strategy or the next phase of the exit strategy from the economic lockdown um, which we are in. Um, they are just some policies. Uh, we are slowly moving out of uh, the um, uh, pitfalls of the crisis and um, I'm just going to explain those uh, steps um, um, as they were announced yesterday and also I will go th uh, with you through the document that um, consulted both Angela Merkel and uh, the Prime Ministers which was published by uh, the Academy of, uh, the, of National, the National Academy of Science, the Leopoldina um, and uh, I will give you more details about that. Um, I must say that uh, right now it is very difficult to actually give good advice. What is um, the right thing to do and what isn't? Um, I have noticed that one side or one group of people, not one side, because it's very nuanced right now. We are in a very different situation, but one group of people believes that the economy um, is unimportant and that you should um, only take care of, uh, of your health and so forth. And um, they don't see the consequences of, uh, of poverty, of uh, what can happen to us because it's so remote from them. Uh, they don't understand the gravity of the situation economically. On the other hand, you have sometimes people that really wish um, that the entire virus does not exist. The, the disease were just a scam um, and even, you know, even those that are not going full out into uh, into conspiracy theory land, uh, far-fetched uh, stuff, there are still a lot of people who really desperately want to believe stuff that is not true. And I have noticed that a lot of very intelligent people go a long way to deny the reality. And um, it uh, in that spectrum, it is really difficult to a find a, a place and b give good advice. And uh, the reason, um, the main reason, if you if you are you know independent of what other people think and say, which I by and large am, uh, you still have to figure out for good advice what the problem is. So for good advice, you have to read the medical journals and you think um, I have not understood the infection. Uh, route the transmission uh, completely. This is the biggest problem so far because there's also a lot of debate going on and also some people are in denial about this and that and we are very unsure. There are likelihoods involved in, in uh, how things go um, obviously and um, the main route is of course spittle from coughing, from uh, sneezing, from speaking um, but there are strong indi uh, indications that there is still something like a smear infection. How that works is not quite clear and it's also not quite clear um, what that virus can attack, uh, attack and, and how. How does it reach the receptor? That's very difficult actually to, to kind of figure out and how to protect yourself against it. How, how strong does it bind to the receptor? Why is it so effective? and all these questions. Um, there are a lot of questions that actually have to be answered before you can decide. Oh, uh, a face mask um, will do the trick and you can uh, ignore um, hand washing or you can uh, think of uh, or you should think of hand washing but don't forget the, forget the cloths or you think of um, uh, hand washing destroying your skin because of the soap and maybe you should also um, take other precautions um, where cloths, uh, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of uh, considerations you, you have to take into account um, if, you not, if you're not quite sure how the transmission actually works. So for now it is extremely difficult to give good advice and I give everybody a lot of slack no matter your party affiliation. I see a lot of mistakes from all um, from all heads of government right now. A lot of mistakes. Uh, Boris Johnson had uh, a 180 degree turnaround. Uh, Donald Trump's reaction, his action was actually quite um, cautious but his words were somehow um, going the other way and um, uh, that is exploited now by his uh, opponents. It's also uh, very stupid but he, he actually did not uh, let people come in from China when we in Europe still did. So we are coughing much harder, have, you know, per capita we have uh, many more deaths, we have many more infected people and so forth. 
but this is not what what uh, his political opponents will will even uh, um, pay their attention to. You know, they just see his his uh, mistakes and will exploit every uh, every minor uh, a, a, a little a verbal uh, glitch. Um, and um, I could go on and on and on. I think there was not one single head of government that made not an egregious uh, mistake in that crisis, in that very new situation. So I give everybody a lot of slack. I give everybody a lot of slack. And um, so here are the, um, the steps Angela Merkel and the prime ministers of our states are going to take. Um, the smallest shops up until uh, 800 uh, square meters are to be reopened, as well as bike shops, uh, car merchants and uh, bookstores, independent of their size and uh, libraries and archives anyway. Um, botanic gardens, parks and the likes are going to uh, open as well. I don't even know why they were closed because you can actually uh, walk past a lot of uh, people in those um, places. But um, I have also noticed that uh, there are, you know, some spots in these gardens and so on. They are, they are very popular and you have crowds and you, you don't want crowds usually. So there are some precautions that are also advised. The shops, for example, they are asked not to allow queues or lines in America, lines of people. Uh, they are, they have to ask the customers to to um, to spread uh, uh, in in the in the shop itself or on the street and also don't form lines on the street. So they are precautions. Um, that are uh, reasonable uh, precautions that of course have to be taken in that scenario. Um, the barbershops will have to wait for the third, uh, the fourth of May. Of course, bars and restaurants will remain closed. Um, that is based on the advisory of uh, national uh, of our National Academy of Science, and I want to explain in more detail what they had written up um, as an advice because it gives an insight of where we are going politically. Um, and I think the, the real danger of this crisis is not so much the virus, but um, the people that are going to exploit it. Um, as I said, I'm not pointing my fingers on any head of state right now, because if you are in charge, if you have to make the decisions, you are going to make uh, mistakes. Everybody who is that sure about what needs to be done is an ideologue who does not care about human lives. And um, those people pierce through. Um, so the uh, National uh, Academy of Sciences had uh, formed a board or a committee to write uh, this advice. And quite naturally, they did not just have medical people and um, and uh, uh, economists on, on their board, but they included everybody because they want to be nice to all the philosophers and all the uh, socialists uh, of, of all this humanity um, uh, um, chairs. So um, uh, they had uh, a, a nice comedy and, you know, wedged in uh, some of these uh, precautions, the medical precautions and the economic uh, precautions. But then you also have the ideologues, the only people who are dead sure of what needs to be done. And what gives a glimpse of this is the title of the document. It says coronavirus pandemic um, to overcome the crisis sustainably. Now, sustainably uh, does not sound right, does it? Uh, because you would not use that word in that fashion. And I have to explain um, what they mean. You read that word in international documents that were crafted by Germans or in the cohorts of Germans, usually EU documents uh, that you have a lot of sustainable stuff. But what does it actually mean? Um, it sounds like something is uh, durable um, or it's, it, there's some foresight and this is what it's uh, supposed to imply. Um, you may think, okay, this is about uh, storing masks, face masks, um, and buying more beds, uh, more ventilators and so forth for future pandemics. No, um, sustainable actually means the Green Party, Green Party uh, platform, the entire thing. Sustainable is always about environmentalism. It is a, a code word for environmentalism. And sometimes it's combined with the word social, so you have uh, social sustainability. And you only understand that f 
phrase if you consider that the left sees itself as progressive so they know already the future they are the big uh, fortune tellers who already know the future um, know how to move there you are in the way if you don't want the same things um, and uh, if, if you want you know the opposite then you are even reacting so reactionary um, to it so um, sustainable means um, they have already envisioned the future and in that future um, the the things they want now has to has to be placed okay so for, for 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 whatever they want to see in future it has to be done now because they already know the future that's that's the whole shtick of the political left it has always been that's why they call themselves progressive um, so this is um um the title of the document and you cannot uh, uh, see from that we are we are actually dealing with like 30 percent real scientists and 70 percent of fortune tellers the body of the text starts with the spread of sars cov2 has a massive consequence for all areas of society in the light of the resulting enormous insecurity science has a huge responsibility and here is something um, you, you should know just from the get-go. Um, science is introduced as a big brother figure. It's, it's the old man with a beard that knows it all and that's now speaking with one voice. This is how the left likes to present science. Uh, it is not um, some people proposing their, their thesis, or then it's peer-reviewed, it's published, uh, the next guy comes along as a counter-argument and that's weighed by his colleagues and, and people believe what's most plausible. Uh, that's not the way um, a committee would define science when 70% of fortune tellers and only about 30% might be true scientists. What you can also hear from that sentence is that these people are over challenged and quite naturally they must be because the entire weight of the nation lasts on their shoulders and it shouldn't. Uh, it is the tragedy of our times that everybody is screaming for authorities and um, uh, for, for better or worse, they are looking uh, for scientists or people who claim to be scientists um, on, and experts to guide their ways. And uh, this must overchange these people because even if you are um, good in, in your field, let's say you are uh, a, a medical specialist, you have your specialization within that uh, uh, realm you are either into cancer or you are into heart diseases or whatever you do have a significant uh, knowledge of the other areas quite naturally you do um, but you cannot answer all the questions and um, it's even more problematic when um, when we are talking the, the future of the entire country, usually you need a, a broad debate with everybody giving his, his point um, of view and the market of ideas must work its magic. Um, and this is not... Um, um, this is not a shade on these people. They are, they are probably um, very flattered by that job okay they are asked to do great things to decide great things for the country and they um, may go into this with a mindset of yes i can uh, but then they sit around with these philosophers and musicians and so forth and suddenly they realize oh do i really know not uh, enough about that virus to say how you can protect yourself do i really know enough about that uh, economy to say um that will lead into poverty and this is the way we could protect our, uh, ourselves against it. Uh, you're sitting there and the most certain people are the ones that show no scruple whatsoever and uh, you will probably just cave in. No matter what they say, you are probably going to cave in. So this, the discussion on that board was probably, given that text as a result, um, along the lines of the overall media um discussion and uh, a lot was uh, it starts already with uh, the discussion of the gravity um the, all these numbers floating around you know um how many people were tested and so forth and of course then because they are smart people by and large they uh, accept the insecurities and they say we need more data so they write 
uh, we, we actually have to collect more data. But um, the issue is that there they are transgressing the uh, legal rights issue a bit and quite a bit for the sake of covering up that they aren't gods who can know it all and uh, um, should maybe pay the attention to the to the places where uh, they are most likely to find remedies of the situation and not just to fill the voids of the you know um, most frequently asked questions yes most frequently asked is the question how many how many people are infected what's the death rate and so forth but the question you should be concerned if you actually want to consult the government is how do you solve the problems how do you get the economy back on track and how do you stop people from a getting infected b mitigating the disease and c uh, not overstraining the uh, healthcare system these three questions um, are the first ones you should uh, answer and you should uh, not be concerned um, about gps tracking okay but this is what they are doing they are asking explicitly for apps and gps tracking which of course was employed in um, uh, in south korea and in taiwan um in no, uh, i'm not sure of uh, taiwan but it was uh, done in singapore and um, it makes some sense if you have few people who are infected if everybody's coughing already, you don't need tracking anymore. Uh, you need ways of um, identifying um, transmission, um, the ways of transmissions, and uh, you have to ask people um, to uh, go into self quarantine uh, very quickly when once they sneeze for whatever reason, uh, take a day off. That's uh, more protective of the economy than um, uh, you carrying on to, to work. And so on so this is actually um what 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 you can do uh, making people attentive of um, um the situation so they can actually adjust to it however to trace everybody and to trace who who has met and to ask people to um bug their own devices i know they are bugged for google and so forth but you do have actually more trust into the um, Silicon Valley uh, left-wing fools <laughs> than in the government. At least you should. You should have more trust in them uh, because the government is more likely to infringe in your rights and has more powers to do so than uh, these people. So um, that is a very bad uh, advice and they should have just simply said, well, we don't know, but for this and that reason, it is a question we don't need to answer. Connected to this, they go into the feasibility discussion. Um, they are the expert board and they are making a decision that's not based on broad discussions of this or that um, um, idea. And in, in, instead, they, they are uh, talking about soft power uh, strategies quite openly, um, how you can be manipulated in a way. Um, so they are saying, um, if you uh, tell people um, that they can help themselves and the people around them if you create intrinsic motivation it works better than punishment yes that's uh, that's very nice but it is also the kind of the, the mindset you adopt when you are in this oh the entire world is on my shoulder position you should question that first and then they suggest that um, a realistic timeline should be given um, again that is a, a piece of information you just simply do not have and uh, what you need to find out right now is not the timeline it is really um, what what you can do with bats right now you should actually ask the government to uh, allow animal testing right now um, you know encourage uh, stem uh, field research because that's all been uh, moved out of uh, Europe. Uh, stem, uh, stem cell research, for instance, uh, has completely gone to Israel and to the United States. So what they should have asked for would be um, removal of red tape. Okay, red tape removal. Uh, the, in the entire document, they don't speak about the restrictions of science uh, because of ideological decisions in the past. Um, but this is the, the only way out and we actually cannot we cannot um, give timelines. We can't give promises. We can only say we hope we will have enough credits um, to pay off 
um, uh, businesses for long enough as as long as they have to shut down, or we can we hope we will have enough uh, resources to pay off um, sick days if if people uh, catch something and we want to be precautious so as well to send somebody home and not to get uh, the entire infection chain starting again. Um, a realistic timeline is impossible. It's impossible to get um, even to God. Uh, what they should have uh, said is, we don't know a realistic timeline. Um, be honest about it, be transparent about it, and um, um, talk about the obstacles that need to be removed so that people can do the best research that is possible. And in that context of um, intrinsic motivation versus punishment, um, they also speak about uh, how elderly people um, can uh, cannot be just locked away uh, because um, that will uh, let them rebel against it um, uh, if they can. <laughs> um, it, it is pat uh, paternalistic, that's how they call it. Um, what um, I would add is, um, it is also impossible. Um, Boris Johnson was trying to do this, but I could have told him straight up that you cannot isolate people perfectly. People need food, um, they need to see their doctors and so forth. If um, everybody else is having the bug, um, your elderly person will catch it sooner or later as well. When it comes to the very young, they have um, the schools in mind and what has to be done there, but also I would say uh, some more ideological input, which I will talk about uh, later. Um, and it is um, it is an interesting sentence with which they start the section uh, about the discussion on um, how we go back into education because the schools had been uh, closed, of course. And it says here that um, uh, in uh, the education, uh, the standstill of the education has led to social inequality. While you may think, well, um, if the children don't go to school, your main concern should be that they become stupid. <laughs> Their um, primary concern is that they become in, in unequal or that in inequality uh, was the, the main issue with that. However, when it comes to the hard policies, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. The uh, younger kids are going to school first because they need most attention and um, the, fo the fourth grade is uh, is to be opened again in a couple of days. Um, the toddlers uh, that are in um, in, in preschool um, and nurseries um, uh, they are not uh, they they should not uh, be grouped together. Uh, they say because of um, the distance uh, they they cannot hold distance. They are just too small to to um, to think of rules. And so they, they ask uh, parents to, to have an eye on, on their little ones um, while they are preschool. All steps, they caution, um, are under the condition that um, there aren't too many new infections, that uh, the capacities of beds and ventilators and so on are built up. So uh, we, can, we can improve on um, the number of people that are um, being treated in the hospital or also I would say in, in other places because um, medication may become available in a couple of months, uh, in a few months, and then um, uh, fewer people will need to go to the hospital. I personally, uh, before I continue with what they say, I personally think there's too much stress on the vaccination right now. I think um, vaccination is a very dangerous um, therapy choice anyway, always, because it, it, it changes your body. Um, you have to go through rigid testing. And I have heard a lot of promises of maybe next year we have a vaccination. Um, that is very um, um, unlikely. We never had a vaccination so quickly. What I think, and I'm very optimistic, is that A, this virus does not mutate very much, and B, that we will find ways to mitigate the disease uh, um, in, you know, in a variety of ways. A, we will have drugs that directly attack the virus, and B, we will understand the virus better. So we will understand what symptoms can be treated in what manner during 
during the course of the disease. With COVID-19, we have the very peculiar situation that it's, uh, it's um, suppressing immunity at a very early stage and over uh, causing an overreaction, a cytokine storm and other uh, inflammatory um, uh, complications at a later stage of the disease. So the auxiliary, auxiliary treatment of the patient really, you know, is uh, contingent to the stage of the disease. So the more we understand the disease, the more the better we can mitigate the disease. The more. Uh, the risk comes down and we are not afraid to go to the hospital. We won't even need to go to the hospital and then we can safely, that's important, safely build up immunity. And I think that's going to happen before we come around to see a vaccination. Just a side note, I personally think um, the, the hopes in, in vaccination are a bit too high, but also that the hopes in uh, the auxiliary um, treatments and the understanding of the disease, um, they are too, uh, too low. Uh, people have not, uh, have not thought this through yet. The last precaution they mention is that um, we must not um, become lax over time for the uh, rules that uh, we come to understand. Like the hygiene rules, um, wearing your masks in, the, in public transport and so forth. And I have mentioned at the beginning of the video that I've seen a lot of people who deny all risks. And I find that troubling, either they don't understand the economic risks or they don't understand the health risks. Um, I have talked a lot on my channel and also on my blog before I started videotaping about sex differences and how I believe that men are usually a bit better at assessing risks. Now in a crisis, I, I have noticed that by and large, this is true. However, uh, men who don't still want to present themselves as if they do. And their image, it seems, is that of a superhero, of an action uh, movie or uh, of a soldier. Now that conception is um, often misguided. Uh, a, a real soldier, a real hero would, of course, have fear. We call, we call it fearless. We call it fearless because uh, they they know they can lose a limb, uh, they they uh, can lose their lives. Um, but they take this risk uh, because uh, they are stopping a crater threat. They they want to protect their country and their comrades. If fearless would mean they just wave risks, they are they would be terrible soldiers. So if your guideline is that soldier that just ignores the entire cavalry coming along, you are a very, very bad soldier. And so um, the guy that I've uh, noticed um, speaking out a bit uh, in this crisis uh, seem to be following that uh, wrong guide. Um, on the other side, I saw women who are um, only into emotions. They want to talk about panic and fear. How much uh, is fear mongering? Um, can't we calm down already? And for those women, uh, the men who say, you know, ignore the cavalry, who cares, um, may be attractive for a short period of time. Uh, but uh, it is very dangerous if they uh, turn the entire conversation about fear. And I also have noticed on my channel, um, I mentioned a lot on my channel and on my on my blog before that we have become a bit effeminate. So the result is a lot of men are not terribly good at risk assessment and uh, they want to join in the conversation. And who is dominating the conversation? The media and and basically cultural life right now, it is women. So we are talking fear mongering all the time. What is the right level of fear? Um, are the measurements that are taken um, adequate to the level of fear? And, you know, the reasonable thing to do for both sides, I mean, for both sexes, would be uh, to ignore the, the entire emotion stuff and, and point your attention to the problem and how you can be a part of the solution. Um, your emotions don't matter. Okay, facts don't care about your feelings. That's not a quote from me, but um, it's true. It does not matter. Your level of fear does not matter. 
Okay, that's important. Um, however, for a man, uh, even an effeminate man, I really, I, I think I can ask of you to uh, to not be blinded by the emotion uh, uh, talk and do focus on it and uh, turn the conversation to something relevant. And uh, for a woman who may feel these emotions more strongly, um, if you need an outlet, maybe you should draw in female comrades, your sister, your best friend, your mom, you know, but maybe you should not, you should not try to panic your husband and you should not ask uh, your husband to play the soldier that he isn't. Um, it's a stupid dynamic and we are in a situation where, uh, you know, people try to pretend boldness when they are not and that leads them to um, take down their guards. Uh, that's very stupid, so um, don't obsess <clears throat> so don't obsess about your level of fear. I'm sorry f about my cold, by the way. Um, it's better to have a cold than, you know, a heart attack. I have already mentioned uh, as a precaution, they are suggesting um, um, that face masks should be worn in public uh, transport and also in the supermarket, but there are no rigid rules. And Angela Merkel followed uh, suit, as she said, uh, this uh, will remain uh, voluntary. However, uh, the general discussion of the economy is very mixed and so they suggest, uh, for example, that uh, the uh, companies who are in distress may apply for um, for taxpayer refunded a reduction of working hours. We have a law that's called Kurzarbeit, which means uh, short labor, and it means that people work uh, short hours and uh, the taxpayer is going to, to, to pay the rest of the salary as long as the um, company is in distress. Um, there's actually nothing um, new that the government can do. Um, this, um, there are a lot of applications uh, quite naturally at the moment and of course um, I would also support that um, companies uh, take advantage of this. Um, um, then they uh, also mention unspecified uh, liquidity aids um, and um, subsidies also um, unspecified and uh, tax, uh, tax deferral. Tax deferral is if a company is in distress um, it um, may lapse the tax payments. Um, th those are the more expensive uh, monetary uh, politics uh, policies and um, it comes with a double speak. Um, that's quite interesting. Um, they do say that taxes should also be cut uh, because uh, um, you, you cannot just, um, uh, you know, um, defer some uh, uh, taxes for the companies that are in distress and then um, just watch every company come into distress uh, in the following months uh, and years. Uh, but you also have to reduce the burden on uh, the public um, to finance the state. And so they, they say they want the taxes cut. However, if you read further in the document, we'll find that very implausible because um, they do not really uh, want to um, compromise on any single of their policies. It's quite interesting anyway, but they he say in this section that they uh, would like to see the taxes cut to satisfy the conservatives, so not to be exposed to um, criticism of one-sidedness, I suppose. Uh, they also suggest that the planned tax cut, um, the so-called Solidaritätszuschlag, uh, um, um, uh, that uh, this tax should be cu uh, cut sooner than it was planned. Um, um, it, it was actually planned to be only cut for some people and they suggest that um, it, it may even go for, for everybody. So this is an income tax cut because the so-called Solidaritätszuschlag uh, is just um, a fancy schmancy name for a, a branch of our income tax. Uh, it's not different from any other tax. It was introduced under the promise that with that money the East uh, German portion would be rebuilt after the communist regime. Of course, that money just went into the general budget and it did not go into the East. It did not do anything. It's just an additional portion, uh, an additional part of our income tax. And it was promised to, cut, to be cut. Um, and uh, they suppose that this is um, a, a going to happen sooner. Um, 
But that's contradicted, of course, with their wishes of um, a, a more um, expansive uh, monetary policy, and they suggest uh, the expenses to rise in healthcare, which is something we at the moment are most um, open to, I would say. Um, digital infrastructure, which for me is, you know, is still in the realm of what I consider core functions of the government because, uh, sorry for all the hardcore conservatives and libertarians, uh, but I think that uh, um, infrastructure that is very unlikely to be actually taken care of by the market and has not been observed to be uh, being taken care of for, uh, by the market um, must be created uh, by the internet, uh, by, by, um, uh, by the government. And uh, the internet, which is a, a military endeavor originally, uh, should, uh, should be part of, of that core function. And uh, I think, you know, that uh, um, asks for more, for more expenses right now. Uh, but then comes the, the, the bummer. Um, they also want to include, of course, climate change policies. Additionally, they have in mind that uh, the pure monetary um, building uh, institutions like the central bank, the ECB uh, or ECB in, uh, in English, in the English abbreviation, the European Central Bank, um, is uh, to um, use some um, unspecified policies to um, get the markets uh, afloat. Um, uh, probably a reduction of, of um, um, interest rates or whatever. Um, they don't specify it. Um, then that uh, the European Investment Bank, that is an equivalent of the World Bank, a um, subsidiary, uh, subsidy providing entity, that uh, they should give more credits and uh, that the European stability mechanism should uh, also um, provide more funds. Um, that is the ESM, the European Stability Mechanism, is also a kind of bank, but this one is uh, giving credits to member states of the EU. They also include a point about uh, expenses to be made uh, in, uh, uh, in order to save the diversity of species. Um, that is, you know, the worst time, in my opinion, for such a thing, um, I can kind of get my head around uh, climate change. Maybe I just have not yet understood the whole thing. I have to look into all the chemistry and, and stuff to kind of understand if, um, if it is more urgent than I expected. Um, um, but when it comes to um, um, diversity of species, I have um, the experience that we are usually talking about bugs. We are talking about um, uh, insects that, uh, that that have their genomes um, split very very often uh, from new species a lot of the time, and uh, those uh, species are not very original. Uh, we are talking about dots on the wings um, and. Um, you know, eye colors and, and so forth. And those bugs and um, insects, they are found um, uh, in, in some forest, in, in uh, the rainforest or wherever. And when the researchers come back, uh, those uh, uh, branches of uh, the uh, tree of species has gone again. Okay, and uh, the majority of um, of sp uh, species that are supposedly going extinct every year, I think they are talking about thousands or millions sometimes, um, they are just those bugs, okay? And of course I'm not saying, okay, kill all the lions or kill all the um, uh, wolves or whatever, um, but you know, if you're talking about rodents or rats or whatever that are not actually um, dying out, I'm uh, I'm getting really rankled about this. Um, so, um, the, the bogus uh, diversity claims and, and the diversity politics uh, have to take priority in the midst of a crisis, a huge crisis. We are have we are taking care of bugs. By the way, we are we are weighing bugs now. In in Germany, we are we are weighing bugs independent of the species and just claim that uh, insects themselves, as you know, insects as a whole, are dying out. And therefore, we have to take measures so that bugs, bugs in general, don't die out. That's how stupid it has become. Um, and this is going to, to move forward. They cannot, the, the, the ideologues, they cannot compromise. They cannot compromise a bit 
That's a big issue. Everybody else has now to, to fasten uh, the belt. Um, everybody else is now really worried, but the ideologues will care about bugs. Um, and um, they also speak about um, uh, social uh, sustainability. Um, you know, that's well, whatever that is, it's because they envision the future and um, uh, so it's, it's probably some uh, some uh, handouts um, to the very poor, um, Pratt and circuses, um, and and you know there is this future compatibility. I hate all these these strange political uh, um, words that make no sense. I think the difference between an English speaking politician and a German one is that. Um, the English-speaking politician will use uh, words he understands and can explain in about 98% of times. You do get your strange words in between, but um, when it comes to, to German politicians, they don't understand any of the words and you have all these uh, fighting words and, and weird phrases that make little to no sense. So there is future compatibility that's to be created. and. Um, uh, the gain of resilience, res resilience gewinnung, the gain of resilience. God knows what that is. And to make sure that they won't compromise on a single uh, minor issue, uh, they have even written in, uh, they have written verbatim, uh, it must be pushed through with high priority and uh, with, a, with the same height of priority and even more. So with the same priority and even more the Green Party platform policies have to be pushed through. And this is going to be in line with the Green Deal. Yes, in America, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is a joke, is a joke. In Europe, it's, it's policy, it's true policy. It is outlined to be the future. And there is very little discussion about, uh, about this. Then they grant that we will continue with the um, market uh, economy. I'm not kidding. They, they have actually written that um, we should keep the market economy. That's some breadcrumbs for conservatives. They want to hear it. Of course, we have very little left actually right now because we have more red tape than anything. You can barely dig a hole without some uh, supposed uh, extinct, uh, supposedly extinct species being found there and so on. And um, of course, they add that this uh, market economy should be sustainable. So yeah, you, you are allowed to sell and um, and produce whatever you like, as long as you get a license from the state and they tell you maybe how much of it uh, and so on. So it isn't actually really market economy, but um, that is what they they supposedly grant us. It, it's a breadcrumbs. That's how little is left to uh, people who are freedom loving, who who's, who want to be in a Western nation and not a socialist country. It's like, oh, we are granting you not to be in a gulag. Oh, yes, good. It's so nice to you. You don't have to actually work in a gulag. Oh, that's so sweet. Uh, they call not to lose the focus on what they say is uh, a civilizational challenge. And that civilizational challenge, which we should not uh, lose the focus of, is of course climate and uh, diversity of species, but as, as well as transnational cooperations. Now, I am very surprised because they, they actually use the word um, um, cope with that, you know, it, it sounds like it's labor, it's, it's something uh, to, to, to be resolved, a problem to be solved. And um, I thought international cooperation was a benefit. Isn't that strange? Suddenly, that is a challenge, it is something that you have to accomplish. Um, and uh, here they say, uh, um, uh, this is a, a main issue we just should have uh, in mind, no matter if everything breaks down, we must focus on international cooperation. I'm all for international cooperation, but I don't understand how when everything breaks down, um, that is the, the focus we have, to, the, 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 the problem we have to solve. Is international uh, no, cooperation a problem to be solved? Or is it a solution or is it supposed to be the solution? And the answer to this is everybody is for some cooperation, but for them, 
for them international, not cooperation, but international, is a religion. That's the that's the main difference. And this um, cooperation, solidarity. I've already mentioned there's a text that's called Solidarity and so on. Um, that uh, speaks of the the entire notion that everything must be um, spread with a lot of cheese. Um, you know, clip talk. Um, like like talking to children and a sentence that is uh, um, showing this quite well is um, the protection of every individual human being and the enabling of a human dignity uh, life are in the center of all government action okay so they want government action and for that they want a they, they want to protect Human dignitish life, whatever that is, human dignitish or dignity, -ish. and of course, all this government action comes with what I've already mentioned before in, in the very beginning um, the need for complete knowledge, complete control. <coughs> so, they would rather see everybody having an app on their, on their uh, phone. And they explain that uh, they, they have not yet understood the infection process, which is true. Um, and uh, in, in brackets, they write, not in family, medicine, or, um, in medical professions, um, age-related uh, uh, care, um, public transport, businesses, and schools. Um, okay, these are just places where people meet, um, but uh, you, you, you get the idea. So they want to protect everybody everywhere. And um, what's interesting here is they, they are um, um, asking for a, a database, a database, a centralized database. They want to standardize um, the information, your, your tracking, your tracking information. They want to standardize um, these data and uh, digitally store them centrally. Um, what they don't ask for, and I really have to wedge that in, because there are far too few medical professionals um, in this uh, in this board, obviously, <coughs> was asking, um, you know, how how can they research uh, the entire um, smear infection um, issue? You know, that's the the the, the problem that has to be solved uh, as as soon as possible, I believe. Um, we have to understand how um, how much we can touch, you know, how close, not, I mean, how close we can come to each other. But, um, you know, there are not too many um, orifices of our, of our body and uh, um, so many direct fluid exchange from, from our body. We can sometimes catch some little uh, uh, spittle here and there, but um, the... Um, the spread of the disease suggests that there is something else and we really have to find that something else you don't kiss everybody all the time so if you're not infectious and you don't spit into other people's mouths all the time it has to go on a surface first and then it goes into your orifice and also related to this even if it came into your mouth as a spittle it is not aerosolized that means it is not um um, moved on little droplets that can flow with the airflow. You're not, you're not saliv, uh, how, how are you calling that? Um, the saliva does not make it into your lung. You're not uh, sp uh, having uh, uh, fluids. You don't spittle, uh, you don't spit your, uh, spit on your lungs. I don't know how you call that. It's, it's a different track. So if you swallow, it goes into a different place. Um, it only makes it into your lungs where ostensibly the majority of these uh, receptors are if you uh, if you inhale okay S uh, a part of a, a watery surface like your your spittle can be aerosolized with airflow um, floating over it um, or, or brushing over it but that's not enough that's not enough and it's it's very unlikely that uh, a, a drop just in your, in your mouth would be enough to um, aerosolize it. Um, speaking does already come with a spray uh, that can be inhaled but um, you know if you if you keep some distance that's uh, that would be already good enough uh, be good enough and I don't think that um, um, that is the main uh, route of infection uh, or it, it's just 
or it's just one of two major roads, uh, uh, routes, routes or routes, wherever you live. Um, and uh, it's more likely that we ha have not yet un uh, understood if, you know, some wounds could be uh, the entry point or maybe some sore in your throat, then maybe um, that makes it uh, uh, um, easier for, for the virus to gain into tissue because it makes everything more permeable um, that it usually would not uh, access. Um, <clears throat> it is not clear yet. It is not, it is not clear yet at all. And they are not asking for animal tests uh, or anything to find out. You should find out um, the actual hard medical facts and not your your meetings with uh, your life. They should not find out the details of your personal life. And so they are explicitly asking for uh, the uh, Personal Data Protection uh, Act to be um, suspended. Uh, for for some um, they, they call it medium um, term uh, period uh, of time. Okay, so some uh, uh, some period of time, not too long, not too short. Middle fistic. I don't even know how to to uh, if there's an, an English word for this, but they they think that in, in the medium range of time, uh, whatever that means anyway. Um, that uh, the uh, the personal right to your information should be suspended. Of course, this has not been mentioned by Angela Merkel so far, and I think she is not going to um, to have that uh, any time soon. I, I hope at least uh, <clears throat> we are not going to be uh, tracked like this. We are not having our um, personal data being stored centrally, and so forth. Um, but um, you can you can tell how how things uh, go by the uh, clip cheese cuddle talk um, that follows, because um, the crisis supposedly led everybody to behave very nicely to each other. Uh, by the way, that's not true, and they come to talk about this uh, a bit later. I don't even see how that could be true, but there had been a lot of propaganda uh, going on that suddenly everybody is helping every, uh, each other and so forth, and that had not been the case somehow if uh, the economy had been running. Of course, this is just anti-capitalism garbage, and um, they are using this wedge um, that now suddenly all the conflicts are gone because the wheels then still. Um, we are hearing that. Um, the egoism and the particular interests uh, are moved aside. And this is presented as a good thing. I'm actually not an adherent of uh, Ayn uh, Rand's objectivism, uh, but I can kind of understand she coming from Russia, how sick and tired she is of this cheese, of this uh, tawdry uh, cuddle hug, uh, forget your self interest, and so on. Everything is supposedly for the community. Um, you don't see it, you don't feel the benefit yourself, but somebody else might maybe sick and tired of this. And then she just came to America to tell everybody, screw it. Um, uh, you are, you have a right to your self interest, and you should maybe better define everything else in the light of your own self-interest. Um, that may not be accurate. We do, um, and it's 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 worthwhile to sacrifice um, a lot in your life and also sometimes yourself um, for the better of somebody else. It, it makes a lot of sense. Um, but, you know, being exploited like this um, for, for so long, I, I, I totally understand how she arrived uh, at the place where she did. And uh, this is what is now being uh, imported or reimported after the Soviets have fallen down into the EU. And uh, they are suggesting that a community orientation of, eco of the economy and uh, community uh, should be strengthened. And uh, this is uh, what, what bothers me because a lot of this cuddle talk blah, 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 has been um, a part of the propaganda um, that whatever conservatives do is, is evil, Nazi, blah, 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 and whatever um, takes money from one person and gives it somebody else, you know, breaking up something um, to, to, to uh, hand it around is uh, 
a good deed. It's a Robin Hood myth. But, uh, you know, if the reality were like this, the Colosseum uh, would be the... Um, uh, the most beautiful thing you can imagine because there was something other people had built up you know like a business or whatever something beautiful uh, um, that was built up and people came along with a mindset that would now be kind of uh, left wing and say you know what there are these stones let's just break them out of that beautiful building and use that to build a shed for your animals or whatever. That's how the um, Colosseum was destroyed. And socialism does this basically with every building um, in a country. So this is your nice, cuddly, sweet, cheese, blah, 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 um, stuff in reality. But most people don't see the Colosseum, they just hear the sweet cheese, blah, blah. Another worrisome sentence is, uh, in general, human beings um, uh, learn stronger or are more strongly uh, affected by examples than statistic evidence. Um, that's true, but the research is actually built on a population that is already primed like this. And the, the population is primed like this because the media, traditionally, um, more so today than ever before, um, is built about uh, on interests, uh, following interests of the editors or, or the owners of the papers. So in reality, um, they have uh, an interest in showing examples of uh, what they like to see and examples of what they don't want. Um, this is not rep representative. Uh, so uh, a population is primed to uh, speak about examples and subjective evidence um, rather than about facts and data and statistics and um, what is actually going on, okay? And this um, um, is a very dangerous development and it should not be exploited. And uh, however, now we are in this crisis where people can only build on that. So what you can do in this crisis is then find examples that are actually exemplary. Okay, that's the only way out because we have not um, built a public dis uh, debate culture where everybody knows what uh, the mean is, what the, the median is, what uh, standard deviation is and so forth. If you want to talk about these things um, as often as we talk about tweets or anything else really, um, people would ha have an understanding of what is going on around them. Now we can only lie to them basically now now our lies are just becoming more accurate because we are saying now look at this person now look at that person it could be you um and by that um uh, people get the false impression that only because they see something it is um it it is widely uh, so the case and it is them they are seeing um so they, they are just suggesting that the, our lives should be more accurate. And in a situation of crisis, you cannot reprime people. So that's the only viable suggestion right now. And I would make the same suggestion, of course. Um, it just speaks to the fact that uh, we had a very uh, sick conversation, um, a political conversation, social conversation over the last decades that uh, led us into this mess. Um, now, they come to talk about um, a, a point that contradicts the entire cheesy mind um, or underlying uh, a strategy, namely that suddenly because this capitalist, capitalist society comes to a standstill, everybody is nice and cuddly and sweet and wants to help each other and blah, blah, blah. And um, <coughs> it is a concern about domestic violence. Um, people sit around um, in, in their homes and they are suggesting that um, in supermarkets and in pharmacies uh, there should be um, to uh, points of, you know, meeting points or whatever where people can discuss their family problems. Uh, that is supposedly going on in France. I'm not sure if that works at all. Um, but I would actually give some advice. I had received an email uh, recently um, asking me to, to include uh, in in my uh, in my um, 
blogging um, some psychological advice and I will maybe do uh, one here. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how much I am actually doing this because I'm not a psychologist. Um, but I uh, I would say if you are in, in a close um, um, proximity to your partner and your children all day long, um, you need to find a space for yourself and some me time and you have to postpone some conflicts. And this is advice particularly to the women, but of course we are now gender bending like crazy and so forth. So it's also quite natural that some roles are reversed in many respects and so forth. So um, what I'm saying is you must solve your monetary problems and you should ask the state for this and that uh, concern and uh, you have to um, look into all of these things. However, your focus, please, should be on what must be done now and what should be done in in the foreseeable future, in the near future. Your conversation should just not include why haven't you done, should you, could you, would you have done. All this uh, monetary in the past, we could have been better off when, but should be postponed, should be postponed. He needs a pint with his friend. He needs a walk in the forest. Okay, he just really does. And she needs to go into her room and she has one of her own and if, if it's the living room, if it's the, the bedroom, whatever, a room where she can call up her friend, her sister, her mom and say, why hasn't he five years ago? Why didn't he take that job? Please to your mom, your sister, your friend, but not your husband. Not now. I'm not saying that's okay to, um, you know, engage in domestic violence. That's not what I'm saying. Um, I'm just saying we are all now in a very strain, uh, strenuous uh, situation. And um, even if, he, if your husband is a very good person and of course will not attack you, and if he does, so you should leave him anyway. Um, but uh, even if he is a very nice person, you don't want to put that strain on your family right now. You postpone the could have, would have, should have debates. You will have them in future and also peter that out a bit, you know. Uh, one week this topic, the next week that topic. Why could you, would you, should you. Recording this, I just noticed that the video is going to be too long for my taste and um, um, making a shortcut here. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, the, the document, the policy inspiring document and the way they want to exploit the crisis for other interests in the realm of uh, realigning education, for example, um, strengthening the EU, uh, you know, aggregating power in the hands of a few, um, how they uh, put in ever more uh, Green Party poli uh, policies um, and so forth in a second video which I will upload very soon and I hope to see you then. Bye!